Hey everybody, Arthur here with another unboxing video. Today we have Joy Toy Warhammer 40k Squig Hog Knob on Smash a Squig. And that is a tongue twister, mouthful title right there for a figure it is mount. But it comes in a big box, a lot bigger box than I was expecting. On the side it has the name, shows the figure on its mount. And then on the back it just shows the figure and all its glory and the mount as well. That Smash the Squig looks glorious, but let's go ahead and get Knob and the Smash the Squig out of the box. The first thing you're going to notice straight out of the box, how massive the Smash the Squig actually is. This thing is a massive piece, a lot bigger than what I was expecting. And as you can see, I have it standing really nicely. And it does come with a stand that ports in the front to give it a little bit of front support in case you're going to try to get it into some crazy poses. But we also get a attachment piece, which I guess would be like the standard or the flag that would actually attach to it. And it looks like a snake with some metal rivets on a pole. Just pretty simple, but looks pretty good. With that attached, um, it just adds to the ensemble of the Smash a Squig. Articulation wise, for the Smash a Squig, uh, his tail has a little bit of movement here. You can sort of see it's almost like a, a ball joint, not anything too crazy. That's pretty much it. We do get some movement in the hips. Like, that's actually on a really nice ball. It can kick out a little bit, but you can see. How nice. We get the knee bend here. And we get the lower leg bend. Goes back that far, but it goes forward more so. So you can get it forward that way. We get ankle pivot and bend out of his feet. And then we get a little bit of head motion. Not much. That's that's This is pretty much the up and down. And we get a little bit... Uh, you get more side to side like this than anything. Nothing, no, not much in there. I wish it had a little bit more head motion or at least like an articulated jaw that would have took it to the next level. But it is a pretty massive piece. Oh, and there's articulation in the handle. This thing slides around and, and moves. Diving into Squig Hog Knob's weaponry, we get a pistol looking really nice. A lot of metalized looking paint. I wish the hole went all the way in there. I wish it was just a hollow muzzle. Um, but still, a really nice pistol. Definitely looks like it fits that 40k realm. And uh, yeah, it just looks like it would do some damage. His final weapon he comes with is his melee weapon. And it's almost like a tanfa Because it has this handle right here that he could grab a hold of. Or he can hold it by the long end. I mean, a bunch of different ways. But look at the paintwork and sculpt work in detail. It's got chainsaw blade, saw blade. It's all motorized looking and metal and just awesome. It is so cool. It's got some dry brushing on the handle. The little bottom at the part is uh, painted in that gun metal. Just a really, really cool looking piece. And it's scary looking. I mean, I couldn't imagine this thing uh, like a, a orc on a giant squig coming at you with this thing revving and spinning. Here we have an up close look at Squig Hog Nog, and he looks awesome. I love the red pupils, just looking mean. He's got his teeth peeking out. The airbrushing and dry brushing and shading and the washing on this figure look great. He's got his little, like, I guess it's the clan sort of logo on his strapping. There's like some tears and damage done to his belt, just looking weathered. He's got the rivets. He's got this giant pauldron with like fangs and teeth. Metal bronze bits on there, just looking awesome. The spikes coming off the back. He's got a giant pierced ear. So it's pierced up here. We got this one with the tooth. Looking great. He has a cape. And uh, the cape is made out of some sort of animal because there's its claw. And it has a nice two-tone airbrush effect to going in there. And just looking awesome. Looking awesome. I wish this was soft goods get a, so you can get a little bit more posability out of it. But it still has that nice presence. It's got little bumps and stuff. You can tell it's some sort of animal he skinned. And uh, you can see, again, all the sculpt work. Wash work. You got this rubber tube. How it goes in. They sculpt it around like its flesh is sort of flared up from where the tube goes in. His metalized arm. 
how it's all bolted in there. The attention to detail with Joy Toy is just insane. And I just love it. Love it. Got this nice metalli uh, metallic cyber hand. Looking really cool. All the detail in there. Really good job. We got some uh, vials of something or maybe extra rounds to his pistol. He's got the belt. He's got some little thigh pads or knee pads. He's got little stubby legs. But his beat, uh, his boots, <laughs> I said beats. His boots have like metal guards right here. And then he's got the steel toes. Rivets on the front. Treading on the bottom. Just a really cool looking figure. His other arm is all fleshy. So he only has the one cybernetic arm. And he has this like wristband. Has some metal bits on it. But then it has like a tooth or a claw. Just a really, really cool looking orc. Diving into Nog's articulation um and i just noticed he actually has like a scar on top of his head but he's not going to get much like left and right because he's hunched so he does get some up and down and then he gets some attitude going on but nothing more than that his arm this this piece blocks it he can't really get his arm up that much you know it's this is giant shoulder pad uh blocks it he does that bicep swivel Double jointed elbow, so he can get it up that high. Wrist rotation. There's a bend in the wrist. So the articulation's there. His other arm can only go this far up. The actual sculpt actually hits. So if you try to force it, which looks like for me just doing that might have made a little mark. I don't know if you can see it right there. So be careful with that. He's got the nice elbow that bends. Nice 90 degrees wrist rotation. Bends in the wrist and all that good stuff. He does have the ab hula hoop motion there. So he can crunch forward, crunch back. But then he has the waist as well. So he has double like hula hoop action. Because this is like a floating diaper right here. So if he gets his arms out of the way, he could do the splits this far. He should be able to do that because he's got a ride on that squig. And then we do get a nice knee joint that bends quite well. A little bit of gappage. Ankle bend. Pivots. So a nice amount of articulation out of this beefy boy. Even without his squig, this figure is pretty intimidating. He looks like he's going to mess somebody up. If he's not shooting you, he's sawing you up or chopping you up or however he's going to be using this thing. Um, I did take the pop the hand off at the ball joint to get it to grip that handle because his hand was quite tight. So I did get it to work. You know, you can have him equip it, hold it this way. You can have him hold it on the other handle as well, but I figured it would look a lot better this way. Um, but it's really your figure. It's how you want to do it. Um, but it is such a cool piece and it definitely will have that nice shelf presence and be great for some figure photography. Now we got some size comparison. I busted out one of the gray Knight terminators. So you can really see that the terminators are a little bit bigger, but they're pretty close. So this guy's going to be bigger than your basic space Marine. And then I busted out a three and three quarter Joe. So you can see really the size difference between them. Here we have a size comparison with the Figma Band of the Hawk Guts and Classified Dr. Mindbender. Again, even though these guys are technically the three and three quarter scale because they're the bulkier and bigger of that scale, they can work with other lines. Here we have Squig Hog Nog on his Smash a Squig and it looks awesome. Again, sort of like his other weapon, you might want to pop the wrist off or the hand off at the wrist, and then attach it to the handle, then pop the hand in. But other than that, this is awesome. And as you can see, with the weight of the figure on there, there's no support needed. I didn't need to use the stand. Maybe they were just thinking that maybe if the joints start wearing or something like that, that you might need it. But as of right now, it's being supported by the legs of the squig and looks badass. I could just imagine once I get the rest of the orcs having them all in front of this squig, just this awesome orc army, and that'll look cool to fight against some of the gray knights because I'm going to aim for finishing the gray knights and I want to do the orcs because they're just so goofy and cool looking and they just look rough and I love it. One last size comparison, I had to compare Nog on his squig compared to other figures. So we got our AWOC, we got our G.I. Joe Classified, and we got a Mezco Gomez. And you can see that you could probably take this figure off and use it with any of these figures because it's such a big mount. 
When it comes to Squig Hog Nog and his Smash a Squig, this set does not disappoint. You're definitely getting your money's worth. And honestly, these Joy Toy figures for their Warhammer 40k line of figures is just super impressive. The amount of detail and paintwork that you get and the amount of articulation you get out of them. Like these are awesome figures and they're going to look great on your shelves and again for the figure photography all of that stuff it's going to have that great presence so if you're into that post-apocalyptic or fantasy genre these are great if you're into warhammer 40k these are great so i mean joy toy is just knocking this line out of the park and i can only imagine what their other lines are like i mean they these are some quality figures i really like them and that sums up my unboxing and review of Joy Toys, Warhammer 40K, Squig Hog Nog, and Smash a Squig. If you guys are enjoying my content, make sure you guys hit that like button. New to my channel, hit that subscribe button as it helps the channel evolve and grow. And once I hit 4,000 subscribers, we're doing a giveaway. So some cool prizes there so you can get some action figures sent to your home. And also I want you guys to make sure you hit the silver bell notification so you know when I post up a new video. Because, hey, I post up videos all the time and I go live every week on Wednesday, 7.30 p.m. Eastern for State of the Art. We talk figures, I have guests on, and it's awesome. So come hang out on Wednesday, State of the Art, 7.30 p.m. And also check out Toyco Toys and Collectibles. Their information's down below. Great place to pick up some figures, especially a lot of your imports, like your SH Figure Arts, Storm Collectibles, Figma. Make sure you guys go check out Toyco. Show some love. And I want you guys to have the best luck hunting. Keep on collecting and have a beautiful day.